Welcome to a new video. In this video, I will show you how to write linear equations using slope and passing through a point, using passing through two points, a point and the slope of a perpendicular line. At the end, I will show you a real life application about linear equations. If you want to support this channel, don't forget to subscribe, click on the bell to turn on the notifications to be aware of the upcoming videos. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. Before starting, there are a couple of things that we need to understand about writing linear equations. First of all, in a linear equation where the equation is y is equal to mx plus a, in such cases we need to know what is slope. Always slope is the coefficient of x as we see here. And we need to know what is x-intercept in an equation. For example, here in this equation, x-intercept means when y is equal to 0. So when y is equal to 0, just put 0 instead of y and once you do it 6x minus 0 is 4 right this is already 0 divide both sides by 6 this is gone so x is 4 divided by 6 if you simplify this expression we're gonna have 2 over 3 x intercept is 2 over 3 by the way we already solved the second part of the question 2 over 3 and in this case also the slope is okay in order to find the slope in this case you need to leave y alone so just let me write the equation here 6x minus 2y is 4 so just send this 6x to the right so negative 2y is gonna be negative 6x plus 4 when i send this from left to the right it's gonna be negative 6x and divide both sides by the coefficient of y which is negative 2 these are gone so y is I can write the right side as negative 6x divided by negative 2 plus 4 divided by negative 2 guys from here y is 3x minus 2 so once you write the equation in this form which form the form that we have here y is equal to mx plus a and the coefficient of x is the slope so the coefficient of x is here 3 that means the slope is going to be 3 in this question and y intercept means and we put it here when x is equal to 0 so in our case just put 0 instead of x so it's going to be 0 minus 2y is 4 0 is 0 so do not consider this divide both sides by negative 2 these are gone so y is negative 2 guys so that means y intercept is negative 2 just let me write it here so we need to know those concepts to write clear linear equations to write a linear equation you just need a point and a slope like we have in this example it says what is the equation of a line which passes through the point a and the slope 2 in our point the first number is x1 and the second number is going to be of course y1 all we need to do is just put this information in our equation above here we already see that slope is 2 so let me write the equation y minus y1 is 5 and that is equal to slope is 2 so 2 times x minus negative 3 negative negative is going to be positive so just let me write the whole expression one more time y minus 5 is 2 times x plus 3 it becomes and distribute this 2 into the parentheses and once you do it we're going to have y minus 5 and that is 2x plus 6 and just send this negative 5 to the right to make it positive so y is going to be 2x plus 6 plus 5 and y is going to be 2x plus 11 guys so there is the equation which passes through this point and which has the slope as 2. We might have a case also that we just have two points which our equation passes through. And in this case, this is the formula that we're going to use. In some books, I realized that firstly, the slope is found and then by using just one of those points, the equation is written. But this one is very short and actually they are the same, okay, because here, if you apply the cross product then we're going to have y minus y1 and that is equal to we can just bring this denominator to the right okay and make it like that y1 minus y2 divided by x1 minus x2 times x minus x1 this is the same thing guys if you multiply 
numerator and denominator by negative, then it's going to be something like that. y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Okay. This is already the slope. Okay. So slope times x minus x1 is going to be y minus y1. So in some books, this part is found first, and then this value is plugged in here, and then by using this equation, linear equation is found. But as I said, this is a little bit longer, so I definitely recommend you to use just one formula to finish the whole process. So let me put those numbers into our main equation. And once you do it, by the way, this is x1, this is y1, this is x2, and this is y2, guys. So our equation is going to be y minus 3 divided by 3 minus 2, and that is x minus 4 divided by 4 minus 1. y minus 3 over 1, and that is equal to, guys, x over 4 divided by 3. If this is the case, okay, y minus 3 is going to be x over 3 minus 4 over 3, guys. I will continue at the top right. From here, just send this negative 3 to the right to make it positive. So it's going to be y is equal to x over 3 minus 4 over 3 plus 3. 3 can be written as 9 over 3, guys. I'll calculate this part. Negative 4 plus 9 is going to be plus 5. So I'll write the rest on the left here. y is x over 3 plus 5 over 3. And that is the equation that we are looking for, guys. So... As you can see, we just solved the question by using just one step. And definitely, I recommend you to write down this equation somewhere to use it in such cases. Okay, guys, this might be another case that we may need to write down the linear equation. In this case, suppose that our equation is y1, okay? And there is a perpendicular line, which is y2. So there is a connection between those slopes. The multiplication of slopes of those lines is 1. Okay, as you can see here, a negative 1, I'm sorry. So m times negative 1 over m, these are gone, as you can see, their multiplication is negative 1. And this is what we have here. So in such cases, we may ask to write down the equation of that linear equation. So in this case, this is the formula that we're going to use. We have an example here, and it says a line passes through the point 2, 4, and that line is perpendicular to this equation. So find the equation of that line. From this information we need to find out what is the slope of our equation so if you multiply what by negative 1 over 3 then we get negative 1 of course negative 1 divided by 3 times 3 makes it negative 1 guys that means the slope of our equation is 3 so our slope is 3 in this case and the formula is here already and if once you found this 3 and then what you can do is, if you remember, y minus y1, and that is 3 times x minus x1. You can use that formula after that. But if you apply this, the equation that we have here, then we're going to have something like this. y minus, by the way, this is x1, guys, and this is y1. So y minus 4, and that is going to be equal to negative 1 divided by, here, the slope, in this equation is negative 1 divided by 3. So I'm going to put here negative 1 divided by 3, guys, times x minus 2. If you realize from here, we're going to have 3. Why? Because negative 1 times negative 3 over 1. So negative 3 is going to be positive. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 divided by 1 is 3. So the result of this calculation is 3. So we're going to have 3 from this calculation. And let's continue. And we are going to have y minus 4 that is 3 times x minus 2. Just distribute this 3 into the parentheses, and once you do it, we're going to have y minus 4, and that is 3x minus 6. And just send this negative 4 to the right to make it positive, and in this case, y is going to be 3x negative 6 plus 4 is going to be negative 2, guys. So this is the equation which perpendicular to this given equation, guys. Okay, guys, this is another type of the questions that you may encounter under this topic. It says, which of the following linear equations does pass through the points A and B? 
in such questions guys whatever the equation is it has to satisfy those two points in other words if you plug one in x in our equation if that is the answer then we should get two the same thing is valid for b if you plug negative one in x then we should get five as a y value let's try them one by one for example in a if you put one this point is going to be two and let's put two also instead of y plus two times two is four so it really makes it six so that is correct so it looks like a is satisfied but b has to be satisfied as well so two times negative one plus two times five is it six let's see this part is negative two plus ten is it six no because this is eight and this is six so definitely this is not the answer now let's check b one and two put one instead of x so this is going to be five minus if you put two instead of y we're going to have four from here is it one yes the point a is satisfied but we have to check point b as well so it's going to be five times point b is negative one minus two times y is five and the result has to be one so from here negative five negative ten is it one no because this is negative fifteen and this is one so this is not the option either so we should check c if you put one instead of x this is going to be three plus if you put two instead of y we're going to have four from here is it seven yes but we have to check b as well let me check it on the left at the bottom so we're going to have three times negative one plus two times five is it seven let's see negative three plus ten is seven yes seven is equal to seven guys so this option satisfies both a and b but let's check d also if you put one instead of x then this part is going to be three plus if you put two instead of y we're going to have two from here is it two no so this is not the answer also so the answer is c in this case this is our last question in this video i'd like to solve a real life application in this question and it says Alex sells pen in stationery. Besides, Alex gets daily fixed money. He also receives a commission daily for every pen he sells. He gets $150 if he sells 400 pens in a day. When he sells 1,200 pens, he gets $250. And write down the corresponding linear equation of the model above. In such questions, guys, okay, in order to write the equation, we need two points. And those points are given to us as we see here. This is our first point and this is our second point. As you can see, if you look at the graph, on the x-axis we have number of pens, on the y-axis we have money. So we can write a relation between money and number of pens. Let's represent money as M, okay, M, and number of pens with P. We can write a relation between M and P m stands for money and p stands for pen again so let me write the points first for 400 okay we have 150 150 this is our first point and the second point is for 1200 we have 250 so those are the points and if you remember the formula okay let me write the formula here y minus y1 divided by y1 minus y2 and that is x minus x1 divided by x1 minus x2 so imagine that m is y here and p is x here in this case we're gonna have m minus 150 divided by 150 minus 250 and that is equal to guys p minus 400 divided by 400 minus 1200 if this is the case and then m minus 150 divided by negative 100 and that is equal to guys p minus 400 divided by negative 800 i just don't want to deal with the denominator so i just want to multiply both sides by negative 800 guys times negative 800 
Negative, negative is going to be positive, of course. Cross out 2, 0, cross out 2, 0. So on the left, we have just 8, and we're going to distribute this 8 inside the parentheses. And on the right, these are gone also. So on the left, we have 8 times m minus 150. And on the right, we have p minus 400, guys. And if you distribute this, and then we're going to have 8m minus... If you multiply 8 by 150, then we're going to have 1,200, guys. And that is going to be P minus 400, guys. Send this 1,200 to the right, then we're going to have 8M, and that is equal to, guys, P. Here it was negative 1,200, and now it's going to be a positive 1,200, and it is negative 400. If you subtract them, then we're going to have plus 800. So this is positive 8m, guys. And once you divide both sides by m, then we're going to have m as m is equal to 1 divided by 8 times p plus 800 divided by 8, which is going to be 100, guys. So this is our linear equation, guys. And we also solve the first option. It says write down the corresponding linear equation of the model above. So this is the linear equation of the model guys if you can compare this equation with this graph then as you can see when number of pen is zero okay so if you put zero here then we're gonna have 100 left over right so as you can see this line starts at the point 100 so the graph and the equation they match and if you look at b how much commission does Alex get for each pen? Okay, what you can understand from this model, from this equation is, daily money is 100, it looks like from here, okay? And for every pen, Alex is getting 1 divided by 8 dollar. So 1 divided by 8 is 0 0.125 dollar, guys. This is the money that he gets for every pen. So Alex gets commission of 0 0.125 dollar for each pen that he sells. And if you look at C, it says in order to earn $300, how much money pen Alex need to sell? Well, I don't have that much space left over here. I'll just erase some at the bottom of this and then I will solve the option C over there. Let me write the equation here. M is equal to one divided by eight times P plus a hundred. So this is the linear equation that we have. And in order to get 300, so our money has to be 300. That means instead of M, which stands for money, I'm going to put 300 here. And that is equal to, guys, 1 divided by 8 times P plus 100. And what is P, which stands for the number of pens, okay, in this case. So I'll look for P in this case. I'm going to send this 100 to the left. And let me write it here. 1 divided by 8 P is going to be equal to, guys. 300 minus 100 it becomes so from here 1 divided by 8 P and that is 200 and because I have 8 in the denominator so I'm going to multiply both sides by 8 to get rid of this 8 okay these are gone and from here P is if you multiply 8 by 200 then we're going to have 1600 guys in order to earn 300 for Alex he has to sell 1,600 pence. Actually, you can get this by just analyzing the graph as well. You see there is 1,600 is here. And if you go up, and as you can see, at this function, money shows 300. So that means in order to earn 300, he has to sell 1,600 number of pence. And we can understand this by just analyzing the graph as well. I hope you like it guys. There are different kind of applications in this subject. To excel this topic, of course, you need to solve more questions. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you in the other videos.